time. Time, unlike money or possessions, cannot be saved or earned. And understanding that time is the ultimate currency is what prompts us to invest in it in pursuits that truly matter, like fostering personal growth, nurturing meaningful relationships, or creating lasting experiences. The Latin philosopher Seneca said that we are not given a short life, but we make it short. And we are not ill-supplied with it, but we are wasteful of it. Life is long if you know how to live it. And my journey as a founder started from a radically rethinking time. Can you hear me well, by the way? All right. Started from radically a rethinking time. Time is something ordinary that we give for granted, but it is possible to view it from a different angle. It's a bit like interest rates that right now we give for granted, but back in the past they were considered sinful. If the De Medici family, one of the most respected and largest banks in the 15th century, were to wake up today and witness the contemporary worldview of finance, they would be struck by the widespread acceptance of interest rates and the world as we know it, probably by the very existence of this conference today. And that's because in their time there was a conceptual distance from our ways of thinking right now. Interest rates were inherently sinful due to its perceived unnaturalness by the Catholic Church, as finance was deeply rooted in the metaphysical and religious beliefs. So my background is from banking, I then turned to become a time designer, an analog astronaut, and now finally a founder within life sciences and working as a digital transformation consultant. You might wonder, what's the red thread of all of this? And that's time, or better, amplevity. Amplevity is an approach to time that has helped me to, uh, to ensure that innovation happens every day and not just at innovation conferences or seminars. Amplevity is a word that I coined, it doesn't exist, and it comes from the word amplitude, that means width. So it approaches time in width rather than in length. And I will tell you more about that in a minute. But first, let me talk to you a little bit about space and being an analog astronaut. Imagine that you're in space. Imagine that there is no gravity, there is no circadian rhythm. Imagine that you're seeing 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets in 24 hours. And the space station that you call home is just a laboratory. It's full of cables, machines, it's sterile. It's basically impossible to get a sense of time. And this is the Lunaris Research Station. It's effectively an old Cold War hangar in Poland that is specifically designed to simulate space missions to, to, um, to research long-term effects of isolations of small crews of astronauts to ensure that during long-term missions in space, the astronauts can survive. And this, as you can see, is where I became an analog astronaut where I spent two weeks under this dome with a crew of five people, strangers that I had never met before. And this is where I, sir, I researched and tested how our perception of time changes under extreme conditions, under following a strict routine, having no exposure to natural light for two weeks, being in complete isolation with the strangers, and living on a mono diet, just the same food every day. And it was an incredible experience, of course, but what's most interesting is that after the first few days, time inevitably warps together, and every day feels the same. And the only things that you start to remember are the things that, um, sorry, and you inevitably start to create a time unit to help you remember what has happened, how much time has we, have we passed here. For example, uh, doing something outside your ordinary routine, doing something spontaneous with the crew, like blasting classical music while straining, or seeing the visual evolution of the prototypes that you're working on, or again, doing something for the first time, like wearing a spacesuit, or for how long you haven't showered, given the limited amount of water supply. 
Now, that's an extreme environment, and thankfully, it's also temporary. That's where my role as a time designer comes in, because I have created a calendar for our everyday life to ensure that we don't end up time warping in our, in our everyday life. The, Frank, the, um, the space philosopher Frank White created a term called the overview effect. The overview effect is effectively a tool to help conceptualize something that most people have never experienced. And that is the inner cognitive shift that most astronauts experience whilst being in space and viewing Earth from outer space, where they see this small, tiny blue ball that is in the dark emptiness of outer space, and the only thing that you see is the interconnected ecosystem. That's why I created the word amplevity. I wanted to create a logic to help me express what I had experienced as a time designer, as an analog astronaut, and as a founder, to help me share and express this way of approaching time. And Amplevity is about learning different perspectives to feel like I've lived a wider life than just one lifespan. It's opposed to longevity that connotates a long but linear life embedded in one discipline. And Amplevity is not about doing more, but it's, doing about, it's about doing more diverse things. It's about making it more tangible that the opportunities that the world offers are infinite, to help me reframe that the only difference between an adventure and a disaster is my attitude, to help me reframe that maybe my knowledge, my product, might just better fit a different set of people in a different part of the world. And I like to visualize this as a banana tree. A banana tree is exotic if you're in Denmark. If it's inside a room, you will notice them immediately. But if you take a plane to the Caribbean, they're everywhere. They're so normal that you barely notice them. And Amplevity is about this. It's about knowing so many different perspectives that you're able to see what's normal somewhere and being able to put it somewhere else where it's extraordinary to someone else. And the best example of this is my journey that started as being someone working in banking to rethinking currency, time, becoming a time designer, then understanding how important it is to have time conceptions in outer space, becoming an analog astronaut and testing that out. And finally, working within life sciences and collaborating with hospitals to understand how creating a calendar can help cancer patients do better in dealing with time. And this is what I call the art of amplevity. This is what I'm experiencing as a founder. And that is because I have lived so many different experiences that it makes me feel like I've lived longer than the years I've actually lived, thanks to the multiple lessons learned, insights, and experiences that I've gained. I can say that I am living a wide life. And, of course, I have doubted that perhaps I'm just being superficial with all these different disciplines that I'm working on. But it is the ability to connect the dots of all these different disciplines. It's the ability to relocate something that is ordinary, somewhere extraordinary, that is what is my rocket propeller. And what fuels it? The way that I approach time with amplevity, the ultimate currency that we all have available. And it is Inevitably, the people that unite and embed different perspectives, different logics, different disciplines, that are able to see blue oceans of opportunity, that are able to see innovation, that foster innovation, that create, to, that can break the monolithic logical thinking of the current ways of working, and that can create new futures. And the only difference is the way that I approach time with amplevity. I like to zoom out take an overview perspective and see disciplines, ecosystems, and the infinite opportunity that the world offers with a different approach to time. Amplevity. Thank you.